Hey folks, welcome back to another HP Gaming Game Link video. Today, an unboxing of Epic and Emperor proportions. This monstrosity you see here is Foundations of Rome. Hey folks, welcome back to another HP Gaming Game Link video. If you don't know me by now, uh, we are destined to become very best of friends. My name is Matt, and as I said in the tease, and is very obvious by this dirty great big box here right in front of me, we have received our Emperor's Pledge, our all-in pledge for Foundations of Rome by Arcane Wonders. And I'm chomping at the bit. It arrived, and I just went, you know what, let's bump this to the front of the queue because there is epicness in this box. Uh, a... Area control game uh, with incredible miniatures, literally building Rome from the ground up. It just looks fantastic, and I can't wait to get into it. So, uh, I am going to very carefully move this over here and hopefully not smash any of the equipment. Uh, and we are going to open up this box of crazy. Uh, and I think, I don't know, there's something about just getting into... I mean, ha having a big box arrive is always awesome. That just goes without saying. Come on, there we go. No, no, knock the microphone. But being able to, I just, I, I want to be careful because I know the box is pretty much the size of this outer that is on the table. And there is so much to this game. I know a lot of people have been waiting for their copies. I know people in Canada still haven't received theirs yet. Um, but I'm just going to show you all what's going on in here. And hopefully, again, I've put the microphone too close. The overhead hopefully is picking it up and doing it justice. We've got this crazy, crazy cover. Oh, yes! Okay, so removing this fella here. Oh my gosh. Look at this thing. It's huge, it's huge, it's huge, it's huge. I love it. All right, uh, I'm just gonna quickly, let's bring it out of the box and we'll bring it down on the table and you can see just how impressive this thing actually is. Um, give me one second, folks. Uh, let's see if we can get it out in one piece. Oh my goodness. Um, yes, the foam packaging gave a little bit of room uh, for this one here, but it is just a huge, huge thing. Uh, this is a Dice Tower Essential. Uh, this is Emerson Matsuchi's, Matsuchi's uh, newest one, Arcane Wonders. I know the production is going to be amazing on this. There is a Sundrop Wash on the buildings in here as well. And if I spin this around, there's, that's, that's officially here the back of the box, and I'll explain why in a moment. But just the artwork alone is just fabulous. Um, I'm a big fan of table presence, uh, table presence for days. This game is gonna provide that in absolute spades. So let's get into it. I'm just gonna try and see if I can very carefully remove the plastic because there is a lot of it. Let's see, that's what we've got a trusty knife for to cut into stuff, rip it off, and hopefully not knock microphones and everything else flying as well. Now those who are astute of you, those astute of you um, might notice that I'm not sounding myself. Uh, and that is because I have a bit of this cough thing that's going around. I have tested, I don't have COVID, thank goodness. Um, but I'm trying to keep myself well, so I'm having a bit of a relaxing day doing fun stuff today um, because I'm also a wedding photographer in my other uh, life uh, and I want to make sure that I'm at my best when I go out and shoot weddings and things and all the rest of it. So if I sound a bit off, uh, that is why. My goodness, there is... This box is just huge. At least there's some plastic for the floor. That's always nice. So let's get that off there. Plastic for the floor. The good thing is, I've got that other box. I've just thrown all the plastic in that box, which is fantastic. Now, I don't even know where to begin with this thing. I'm gonna lift the lid. There's a couple of notches here to lift. I hope that uh, the overhead is gonna get this okay. Uh, I know that this one here is gonna be quite the reveal. Oh my goodness. It is a huge box. 
huge, 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 huge. And I've, I think I've opened it the right way. Let's pop that there because that just looks boss as hell. Wow. So you can see you've got all the backers thank yous here. I have no idea if we are even on there. I'm assuming we are. It would take me forever to find us on here. Um, there's all sorts of things, different names. There is a lot of backers, a lot of backers, and they are not alphabetical. So, <laughs> and they go all the way around the sides. They're on every side. They're all the way through. And then if you can see here, uh, I've, I've revealed everything to my side, but if you look here, you can see all the different trays and components all have their own unique storage solution, which is fantastic as well. Um, look, there is a lot to get through. I will come back. If I find our name on here, I will show you that. Um, but until then, we've got other things we've got to look at, and we've also got a couple extra extra goodies as well. So let's, uh, oh, first of all, silica gel, that can go away. Don't eat that, good advice. Uh, let's take a look and see what we've got. I almost want to tip it up, but I also don't because it's meant to slide out. We'll see how we go. Okay. I may not need the uh, knife anymore. We'll see how we go. Let's bring this out here. So we've got um, all these different storage trays for easy. The storage solutions here are just fantastic. Um, the fact that you can literally just pull out components and, and lay them down and go for it. Now, I believe this is the board, but it's also potentially uh, all the cards and other components as well. So hopefully the overhead's gonna give it um, justice or do it justice. The etched Foundations of Rome thing here is awesome. I love that, that's fabulous. Uh, and then we've got, before we get too much further, I'm just gonna make sure the overhead's not too high. Give me one second and we'll uh, have a look and bring that down. Give me one moment. Okay, so now that we're a bit closer down, you'll be able to see a bit more things in a bit more detail, which I love. Um, I've been hanging out for this game for such a long time. Uh, this was funded in February 2020, right at the beginning of all the crazy manufacturing delays, closures due to COVID in China. Even now they're having dis difficulties distrib in distrib uh, distribution and shipping. So to have it here at the table, I'm so pumped, I'm so excited. Okay, so here we have, uh, let's see, we've got what looks like a board for the different eras and the deeds for sale. So the way it works is like, it's a, literally a city building game and you'll have your own buildings that you'll use to, uh, it, effectively what you have to do is buy different plots of land. And when you have a set of plot of land that acts as a group, you can effectively uh, build a building on those uh, foundations and ultimately then earn rewards from your buildings at the end of each round. At the end of era three, uh, the game is over. Whoever has amassed the most points will be the winner and uh, basically, uh, be given the title as um, uh, Empire Builder, uh, for, for lack of a better term. Uh, you've got deeds for sale. So if you want this one at the end, it's going to cost you 10. If you want this one, it's going to cost you two. And obviously they get replenished throughout the game as you go. Uh, end of era one scoring, to era two or three different scoring. Population bonuses grow as the city grows as well, which is awesome. Victory point tracker, that's pretty straightforward. Now what I love about this is, Victory points here, and it's double layered, which is fantastic, or dual layered, population tracker as well, so you can see how much um, each uh, player has amassed over the course of the game. And that's, if you jostle that around, it's not gonna uh, knock too much, which is fantastic, I love that. And then we have the board itself. Now, this one I'm definitely gonna have to get a, a wide shot of, only because when I fold it out, it's not, oh, it's not as big as I thought it would be. I suppose that's because the rest of the components, and hopefully you can see all that here. Now this is the board for two to three players, I think. Uh, and it's got this great artwork of Rome around the outside, which is fabulous fields, that whole thing bustling out, hive of activity. Now on the reverse of this though, however, I think you've got the board for uh, three to five, oh, three to five players, excuse me, knocking things around, uh, which is obviously much more substantial. Now the baseboard itself is actually quite small, but I think it's because the rest of the presence is made up by sideboards for the victory, the player components themselves, all that sort of stuff, uh, which is fabulous. So that's gonna be, I, I think when it's all set up, and look, stick around for the end of the video, I'll show you what it looks like when it's set up on the table. Trust me, this is one you are gonna wanna play, it'll be fantastic. The rule book, which is pretty straightforward, uh, the rule book is gonna give you an idea of how it all sort of works. So Aurelia is here to tell you how to play. See, that's where the board is. Then you've got all the player boards set around the outside, which is why the board is not as large as it needs to be. 
And I kind of dig that. It means that the um, monuments and the player trays are gonna stand out on the table, which is fantastic. Core game components. And the most important thing here, it says the first time you play, you have to sit down and put those little clips in. Uh, and there's a bit of information about each of the buildings, snap in tiles, all that sort of stuff. And unless you wanna paint the uh, minis, you don't need to remove those again. Set up uh, how to build the city of Rome, buying a deed, uh, take income, construct buildings. So it's one of those games where you have to plan out your attack, I guess, and, and really have a forward thinking when you play because you can only do, I think you can either take income, buy a deed card or construct a building. You can only do one of those actions on your turn. So you really sort of have to play your hand, so to speak, management, resource management, so that you have the opportunity to build. Because ultimately, if someone buys that deed, you've got literally four things on the board and you need that one last deed to complete a big building and someone yanks it out from underneath you, oh, that's gonna hurt. Um, but I, I do like the fact the rule book is nice full color. There's not heaps and heaps and heaps of text. It's pretty straightforward. Best part about this, it talks about the monuments expansion in the base rule book as well. So with the Emperor Pledge, um, it's all in one box, which is fantastic. So there's no extra peripherals, storage solution, nice, easy in one tray, fantastic. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, trading and stealing, uh, objectives module, all sorts of stuff. There's a cooperative mode. There is just modes of play for days, how to store components so we know what they are. Uh, the art and lore behind all the different bits, and this beautiful piece of artwork which you see on the box. Um, Mikhail Sortrick has uh, put together that one. It looks absolutely fantastic. We love it, we love it, we love it, we love it. We've got some tokens. Now these are first player marker, uh, which is you know pretty straightforward. It's literally uh, a monument, uh, first player marker. I think it's Romulus, uh, I believe, um, which is fantastic. He looks awesome. Uh, you've got different uh, tokens and currencies here as well, which is brilliant. Uh, plenty of coins there and everything else as well, which is fantastic. They are uh, denoted as well, one coin versus three coins. So you've got different currency values. And then you've got, this is the will of the console, which is um, the, I think this is for the cooperative game. So these are different values um, for your board. So different victory points for population and currency, things like that. And they have different footprints for the different buildings. So I'm not entirely sure how that works, but that's for the cooperative game mode, uh, which we just saw in the rule book. Uh, then we've got cards, tokens, ooh, more gel, which we don't need, we can toss that away. Uh, we've got markers, cubes, more tokens. Oh, I love this. Okay, so we've got here currency. So instead of using those punch outs, which are much larger, we've got metal coins. So just the shine on these, they just look, oh. taking currency or income in form of metal, got metal coins. There's something about table presence. I know I go on and on and on about it, but having table presence, having metallic coins, something with a bit of weight to it, they make a clink. It's why D&D is so good when you have so many different dice. Um, I don't know, there's something about it. It's just fantastic. We dig it, we dig it, we dig it, we dig it. So we're gonna have a look at the a larger coin values of silver. Oh, they feel fantastic as well. I love it. So you've got here uh, Romulus, if that is who it is on the top there, and then you've got uh, the three on there as well. Oh, love it. Let's leave one of those out too. Very good, and I'm, I'm digging the fact there is a solo mode for this one as well. Now, don't go out of my way to back games that have a solo mode, but I do like that when it's an option, because not, not everyone wants to game all the time with me. Um, now, these, I'm not gonna take out of the bags, I just don't wanna lose them. These are the individual building tiles, and when we go through the building trays, you'll actually see there are uh, notches, uh, like we saw in the rule book, for these to go on, and they denote whose um, buildings it belongs to uh, for final scoring and things like that, or scoring at the end of each round. And you've got one of those in each of the colors. There's one for the monument set as well, one for each player. That's all pretty straightforward. And then you've got the cubes here as well. Now, these are your cubes uh, that you use to track score and population uh, on the dual layered player board, which is awesome. And I do like you've got these little coin trays uh, for the different coins as well. Now I threw away my knife, but I'm gonna need it for the cards anyway, so I'm glad I kept it handy. 
let's see, we've got here more plastic for the floor, which is always nice. Um, whenever you're unboxing stuff at home uh, or opening up a game, not necessarily doing all this crap that I do, but uh, when you're unboxing or opening up a new game, do you chuck plastic on the floor and deal with it later? Do you get that excited that you just, just chuck it and get rid of it and it's an afterthought? I know that we do. Even if we're not doing a video for it, it always ends up on the floor. Uh, so we've got here a planning a reminder card. Now I think that's that's the, for the uh, co-op module. Uh, turn guide for the module. Yeah, there's different cards for the player roles. Uh, I think that's for the cooperative mode. Yeah, and these are extra cards, extra reward cards that you can gain victory points on etc. There's all sorts of goodies here. And then you've got the actual um, deed card. So these equate to uh, an area on the grid that you can claim and you'll be able to mark that territory out. And you can see they're all color coded as well so that you know exactly where it is on the board, which is very, very clever. Uh, I do like the fact that even if you're not um, like if, for example, if you were not literate necessarily, you'd still be able to access this game because the symbology is so fantastic. Um, so that's another thing that uh, Emerson, Matucci and Arcane Wonders really, really thought about when we're putting this together. Um, I, it, I, just, I just need to get it to the table. It just looks fabulous. And I know there's a lot of people out there. And I know the other reason I back this one, Catherine, my wife, is going to love this. Uh, area control, area management, forward movement planning. If she sat down and learned chess, she'd be an amazing chess player, but games like Splendor, things like that, when she can see a path through, don't ever play Splendor with her, just, just don't do it. Uh, and then you've got all the other cards here for the rest of the boards. And this is obviously uh, going all the way through for that larger grid on the far side that we saw as well. So I'm gonna put those together, keep them all in one spot, which is fabulous. Uh, and then we've got objectives. And a few extra cards for the monuments as well. And these ones are all not even. Oh, this is more turn guides. Uh, or oh, five players. There you go. Because we went all in and got a fifth player expansion, which is awesome. Just in case, just more chaos. Uh, objective cards coming out now. I am whizz whizzing through this today. I've got a lot to get through. Uh, they're worth eight victory points at the end of the game. But what is the objective? Minimalist, fewest number of buildings, individualist, artisan. So these are objectives, uh, and I think they're effectively an, an add-on. You don't need to play with the objective cards, but obviously it adds a bit more of an incentive to do certain things. And then the monuments expansion as well. Um, there is so much going on in these trays here, which we'll get to in a moment, but I just, I'm pumped. Okay, I, I may not go through all of them because they are all the same, but yeah, bear with me. So this is a monument deck of all the different monuments you can build. Uh, you've got the Triumphal Arc or Arch, Circus Maximus, Colosseum, uh, Forum Romanum, Imperial Harbor, a lighthouse that's gonna look great on the table, the Pantheon, the Regia Residential Property, uh, Royal Winery, yes please. The Watchtower, Temple of Apollo, Temple of Jupiter, Temple of Mars, Temple of Minerva, Temple of Neptune, Temple of Venus, the Temple of Vulcan. Look at that, that looks fantastic. Statue of Romulus, I should say, sorry. Uh, and then you've got the Tower of Wonders, which is a commercial building and has nothing to do with Rome, but the game's been produced by Arcane Wonders, so there you are. You must own a size three plus building in order to build that monument. Ooh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, let's clear this away and then we'll get ready to take you through the other trays. Okay, so we are back, we are in nice and close and I'll explain why in just a moment. Um, yeah, lots going on here today. <laughs> I keep getting interrupted, but that's okay. We will muddle on through. Now, the reason I brought you in close uh, is because we have, look, rather than just, you know, go through it, let's, let's just show you. Uh, I grabbed one of the player trays for you. You're very welcome. Uh, and you can see here, this is just an absolutely epic display of just absolutely gorgeousness. Now it's got this unique vacuum sort of tray sealed 
um, lid here, which I'm gonna rip off for you, and it's got that Foundations of Rome etched thing. I'm gonna put that to the side, and then we're gonna have a look at this absolutely gorgeous work of art that sits before you here on this table. Now these are the different buildings. Oh, it's got a fresh plastic smell. Um, it, it's just gorgeous. So these are effectively the buildings that you can construct during the course of the game. So you claim land plots. Uh, this is one square, one square, two squares, so on and so forth. And you can then construct these buildings on the map uh, and they'll help you score points, etc. So uh, let's, before we get into those, I'll have a look here. We've got these little uh, covers here, which are representative of your uh, placement. So you can then place, oh, that's gonna be, so these guys here, you actually claim uh, plots on. So I don't know if you can see this here, whether it's gonna do justice or not, but they're individually sculpted pieces for each player. Uh, so these ones you place on the board uh, when you buy a title deed card. Uh, and then obviously that marks it as your square, which you can then build upon. Uh, and there's a nice little jewel layered board underneath to store everything here. These larger ones here, uh, you know, very cool, very nice. But I just, I don't know whether they're, because they're double, whether just, you know, they just mean you've got two squares or maybe there's something else to it. I, I don't know, I'm not entirely sure uh, how that sort of works. Um, but I just, they just look absolutely fantastic. And I just hope that the overhead is doing it justice. There's quite a few of those. Uh, that could be maybe some scoring components. Who knows? What I'm gonna do is pop those ones back on there to keep them all nice and safe. I do like the fact that everything fits absolutely snug. Let's get into some buildings. Now, each of the player trays is unique uh, in that these different pieces are different, but otherwise the buildings themselves are actually all the same. Um, now, these have been sun dropped as well. You're welcome. So you can see uh, a bit more detail on these than you normally would. Uh, let's get into it and let's start with, let's see, what have we got here? We've got a garden, which is worth two VPs and gives you uh, culture or something. I think that is there, but that's, uh, here we go. Let's have a look. There you go. Look at these things. Now, as you play through the game and you build up the board, the sheer size and scope of Rome as it grows on the table is just epic. It's just gonna be a crazy game of sculpted kick arsery, if that makes sense. Um, I just love it. And even like the fact they've got the trees and stuff in the garden on the back, like they didn't have to do any of that. They just look fabulous. There was an option uh, to get your entire pledge hand painted and it was about a thousand bucks US, I believe, to get that box. If anyone out there has or is yet to receive, I don't think they're ready yet, a hand painted uh, pledge, uh, can you let us know? I'd love to see pictures of what that looks like. Um, but this, I, I mean, I'm a happy man. Let's have a look here and see, uh, we've got a market here. It's only worth one VP, uh, but it still looks at the business. Again, you've got this little, this little tree. You just didn't need to put that there, but it just looks so good. Trees in the courtyard, market squares. Uh, you've got this little token, that little um, uh, square area here is for your tokens to sit on. So you know that it's yours. I'm digging that, that's fantastic. Uh, we've got here uh, what looks like a fountain, not the Trebi fountain, but it is a fountain nonetheless. And it's a nice big chunky fountain as well. And you've got these sculptures there. Uh, the wash on these is fabulous. I love it. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And we've got the fountain. That's, that's the fountain there. And then we've got the library where all the books and crazy things happen. It's a nice big, um, almost pantheonic um, building. I know that'll come in later. Uh, and you've got all the details here as well. The sculptures, I just, it's just fabulous. And the fact they've used different base plastics for the different buildings um, based on their size as well, I think, is, is fantastic as well. And you'll see what I mean by that shortly. Then we have a resplendent library. So not just a library, but a res resplendent library. I can't speak today. So you can see here, this is an absolutely fantastic uh, piece of architecture here. And I just don't know, like it's, I don't think there's any way I could actually do this justice. I'm hoping that the camera is making it, you know, giving you an idea of just how epic this is going to look on the table. Um, but the detail, like even the roof texture and detail is just fantastic. Um, you know, that you got the thinker out the front, 
uh, it's it's just it's absolutely brilliant 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 I love it and then we have not just a fountain we have a majestic fountain so this is a bit more involved uh, you've got all again the sculptures there so maybe it means that you build a fountain and then you can upgrade it uh, into you know a, a majestic version of same um, it's the same with the library in the markets as well and obviously there's two squares that you would build upon but again the detail 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 is so so important all right then we have our luxury garden so this is a garden again but it's a, a luxury garden more fountains more hedges more sculptures you've got what looks like foliage and stuff up along the top there as well uh, and then you've got you know all the archways and things even more sculptures and trees in the background uh, as well in the back of the piece so if you look at these from any angle there's going to be some sort of interesting feature of uh, this one as well now i will say this too they could have made these with little tiles that lay on the table rather than 3d minis they could have done that and that would have been fine i think the gameplay would have been the same but being able to take this to the next level with these things oh my gosh it looks amazing. It just looks, I mean, I even just going through it here and looking over it here, I just, I can't even begin to tell you just how amazing this looks. And I'm looking at it in person with my own naked eyes. I know you're looking at it through a screen. <sighs> it's fantastic. All right, let's have a look here. We've got marketplace rather than just a market. This is a marketplace. Uh, and this is obviously a larger version again of same. Uh, so you've got uh, all sorts of crazy. There's uh, big uh, bartering halls there. And the market's actually quite a thin um, version, uh, uh, um, piece, but you've got all these uh, bells and whistles. You've got the pillars and towers. You've got multi-level uh, marketing. Oh, can you smell the commerce? I love it. I love it. And the fact that the board's dual layered as well is brilliant. I don't know where to go next. Okay, what have we got here? This is a big one in the middle, a foundry. Now, these are getting bigger <laughs> and bigger. So uh, if I miss some stuff, I'm sorry in advance. But the foundry here, you've got a big, dirty, great big anvil. So you know exactly what it is that's going on. Uh, big uh, smelting house or smelting house, uh, whichever the case may be. But even then, you've got all the detail that runs on the outside. So you've got plants and trees and other bits and pieces that they didn't have to include. Uh, entryway uh, on the side here. That it just, It's just spectacular absolutely spectacular and there there is nothing there is nothing small and small scale about this game even though they're minis all right we've got um another foundry in a square form uh, and that's the foundry uh different version so maybe you can build one of each per game maybe you can build two of each i'm not sure uh, each different type of building and there's three groups there's one that's about population one that's about commerce one that's about government um, or whatever the case may be. Uh, so the buildings just look absolutely incredible. It's another foundry there, it's worth five. So each uh, building effectively has its own victory point scoring as well. The Grand Insula um, here has a population of uh, increase, a boost of six. Uh, so it's like a big, I don't know, effectively a big monastery or big hotel. Uh, and it just looks absolutely fabulous the fact that it's not square on as well i think is kind of good i like the uh the textures the fact that they've got a different color as a base plastic just gives and the wash the wash and the sun drop just brings out some epic details in these things like it's just fabulous i don't know i'm a sucker for detail and table presence but this game just has it in spades all right uh, what do we got here? This is another Grand Insula, but again, another long one for a, um, a four, four space, I think. You have to have four in a row. Connect four and you can get them in there. Let's have a look and see. There it is, look at it. You got this sort of, um, another little sort of, um, I don't know, like a, a government house style thing and then all the accommodations, lodgings and everything else for the populace. And even here, there's trees and other bits and pieces they've put in as well. It just looks fabulous. Magic, magic, magic. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we've had a look at those. Let's have a look at some of these other ones down here. This is a, not, an, a, not a grand insula. This is just an insula. And it's a smaller version. So this one's only three squares large. Uh, and you can see here they've got all the details uh, and everything else there as well. More trees and things. The buildings are fabulous. And again, each player has the same set uh, of buildings. 
um, with the exception of the, um, the Monuments expansion, which I'll show you in a moment. The Artisan Forum. Uh, so this is where all the uh, great thinkers go. So you've got here, I don't know if you can see there, the statues of um, the artisans of our time, or their time, I should say, the tree line. Look at the trees on the side here. It's just fabulous. It's so good. The detail is impeccable. Um, yeah, digging it. Uh, I'm just, I just, I cannot wait to get this on the table and show you all what it looks like when it is set up. Another insula, uh, but this time it is in an L shape or a, a, um, a corner, and you've got this crazy uh, staircase that goes up the side with the trees and everything else as well. Uh, interior there, uh, it just, it just looks. It's so good, so, so good. Uh, we've also got, we've also got um, Domus Maxima. Now the Domus Maxima is only a two square building here, uh, but you can see it looks like there's a little um, feature there, a water carrier, maybe it's an Aquarian, a statue of Aquarius. Uh, it's another domicile, I would imagine, so it helps with the populace, uh, increases your population by two, uh, and Again, just looks absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And I believe, is there another one here? It looks the same. It is the same piece, uh, which is, I don't know. I, I just, table presence in spades. I love it. Uh, and then you've got one domus, uh, which is effectively, yeah, domicile living area. Uh, but it's only one square. But hey, you got to start somewhere. Um, I just, it's just a fabulous piece. I mean, I'd live in that apartment house. That house looks amazing. It looks fantastic. All right, then we've got on this side, uh, what have we got here? The Artisan Forum, we looked at already. Uh, this is a pottery studio, uh, and there are two of those. You can see all the kilns and things there. Nice big buildings. Um, the detail on these is just incredible. I've already said that many, many times. I'm very impressed by the production. I knew I would be when I, when um, I pledged for this, I knew it was just, it was gonna be amazing. I knew it was gonna be quite spectacular. I didn't realize it was going to be this epic. So very, very happy. Uh, we have here an artisan form again, but in that L shape uh, that we saw before. So you can see here the detail. Uh, we've got these guys again, who are, you know, the thinkers. Um, if I have a look here, you can see all of the details there of the trees and, and all the rest of it. It's just, it's, Fabulous. There, again, no, it doesn't matter where you set this up or what position you have around the table, there is going to be something amazing to look at on every uh, facet of the board. And then we have here uh, a bakery um, in the bottom corner there. So bakery, I'm not sure if it means bakery is in bread bakery or whether it's like pottery bakery um, to make, you know, all sorts of other bells and whistles but it just looks the business and I dig it, I dig it, I dig it. Um, so that's a player tray with all of the bells and whistles contained therein. Uh, but because this is an emperor pledge, it comes with five of these trays, one per player. Uh, but then it's also, oops, obviously has to go back a certain way though, otherwise it won't fit. There we go. So if you put one mini wrong, um, it won't fit uh, very nicely, which is okay, that's fine. So there is uh, the Monuments expansion, uh, which is effectively um, another module you can play with. There's a five of these trays, enough for five players, but then the Monuments expansion is different again. So I'm gonna put this to the side here. The Monuments expansion is something else entirely. So we are going to keep this filler uh, because it's gonna help us with storage uh, yonder, down the track. Uh, but I mean, if you're looking at the overhead right now, um, you, you can't not be impressed by this. I am not, I, I will say this first, I am not gonna know the names of all these different um, buildings. So they are most likely gonna pop up on your screen. Um, I will say they look fabulous. <laughs> So let's get into it. Uh, okay, so let's rip off uh, this one here. Well, not rip off, be very careful and remove the plastic uh, for the overlay. We're gonna move that um, just over there for now. Uh, and then we'll get into, oh my God. Uh, 
I'm all about minis, but minis as buildings and buildings like this, that it's, these are fabulous. Okay. <sighs> okay, where do we even start? Okay, let's have a look. We've got, um, let's start with the Arcane Wonder. So this is the uh, Dragon Wonder that we saw in the rule book for the monuments. Uh, there he is, sitting all high and pretty and just taking names as he stares out across the uh, skyline of Rome, uh, ready to fly down and, you know, uh, torch them uh, within an inch of their lives, uh, just because he can, which is cool. So these are monuments you can build in addition to your um, cities, and you actually be able to claim them and get bonuses for that. Um, yeah, very excited. So the monuments will have their own um, little area where you place the individual identifying markers of what their value is. And then you have a little bit here, which is where you place your little, um, the smaller version of your little uh, character. So if I have a look at, he says, frantically reopening everything. So if I have a look at these little fellas, so say this um, one, I'll just say here, they fit just inside there. So you know that monument is under your control. That's what that is for. Uh, and that is fantastic. I love it. I love it how it's such a tight, snug fit. Everything works. Everything has its own place. Digging it, digging it. All right. Let's start at the top, work our way through. Uh, again, not sure of all the names, but my gosh, uh, these are fabulous. So this is, uh, it could be a temple. Temple, maybe temple. Again, the names will come up there. I'm just going to look and admire the pre gorgeousness that is. Uh, these buildings and the wash. I hope you're appreciating that because it just looks fantastic. Uh, this looks like some sort of uh, temple, uh, temple, church, religion, who knows? I just love the detail of the statues, the angels, the guy on the horse, person on the horse, I should say, I can't really be sure. And you look down, it just, the uh, presence presence for days uh, we've got this epic i think this is a market like a giant market or maybe a government house i'm not sure uh, you can see here uh, all the bells and whistles there too uh, the um gallery academia maybe galleria academia maybe maybe correct me if i'm wrong again you'll see it um i sort of uh, no i'm just going to go for it so this is the temple of vulcan with this big anvil. You've got like a, a castle parapets here. Holy crap. These are just huge. I mean, if you claimed this, I mean, you got the big rock at the back as well. I just, if you claimed that and the point values, I have no idea what this is worth, but I want to claim it on the battlefield. I just think on the board, you're building up the foundations and you build this temple to Vulcan just amazing we then have what looks like a temple to i just i don't even know is this persephone or something like that who knows i just hope i'm getting it and doing it justice because there is just so much detail on these things oh my god and the weight is it's very heavy as well a big tree there details on the back i just it's so so good i love it I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. I just love everything just fits just so. Um, now we have a, another L-shaped one. This looks like another uh, a temple. Or they, I mean, they're all monuments. So I imagine they're all monuments to, you know, Roman gods or deities or heroes or whatever the case may be. This could be Hercules or something like that. I don't know. Hercules is Greek. I don't know why it would be Hercules then. Achilles maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It just looks fantastic. Uh, then we've got here uh, Poseidon, maybe, with the trident. That's a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? Yeah, Poseidon kicking ass, taking names. Oh my gosh. This is just, oh, it's just fabulous. What a fantastic gameplay experience. And I haven't even gotten to the nitty gritty of it in terms of, you know, breaking it down, setting it up, etc. As a lighthouse, I believe. Nice, big, tall. Uh, and that's the thing as well. There isn't, I mean, I could have just done, as I said, uh, flat 
tiles, but having the three dimensional objects, it just looks absolutely fantastic. I love it. I love it. And uh, maybe that's a lighthouse. Who knows? All the different monuments are different things. They just look fabulous. Uh, just trying to remember how everything goes. Okay, then we've got, uh, this is, is that for Romulus? A monument to Romulus, maybe? No, I don't think that's it. Because I think I've just seen the other one, which looks like Romulus. Uh, this is, I don't know, but it looks epic. He's got his big staff there. I just, they, it's just such a big presence on the table. Dig in it. And then, of course, we have the Colosseum, uh, which is a, a wonderful landmark of Rome that we all know and love. Uh, people fighting inside the Colosseum, uh, just as the players are fighting inside the Colosseum. I do love the replica, the renders on these, um, the detail. The fact you've got these, you know, Spartans uh, effectively just standing guard. Uh, it's just, it's so good. It's just so, so good. Oh, man. All right. Um, this is Romulus here, I believe. Uh, the god himself who is, you know, sharing the love and giving the money. Uh, so you guys can actually build, uh, you guys can build Rome in the first place or rebuild Rome or lay the foundation as it were. But um, Romulus, uh, you've got all there with the, uh, there's a wolf there, uh, the robes. He's got this skull here as well, which is quite cool. I just, yeah, he's, he's looking, I just, yeah. I'm going on about it. I'm gushing, I know, but damn it, it just looks so damn good. Uh, this could be Persephone, I don't know. Aphrodite, maybe? No, that's Greek again. I'll stop just saying random names. <laughs> she's in a shell though maybe maybe I don't know I don't know we'll find out uh, and then you've got um, some sort of temple I mean the wash on that is fabulous another temple a monument to consumerism maybe I don't know I love it I love it I love it uh, which ones are you liking so far? Which monuments uh, are your favorite? Um, there is plenty to choose from, oh my goodness. Uh, but yeah, well, there's this, I mean, the, the presence of these things is just epic as hell. Um, and I, again, I'm just hoping that the overhead is doing this justice because they are just epic, epic pieces. I know what I'm doing tonight. I know what I'm doing on the weekend. It's gonna be Foundations of Rome for days and days and days. Man. Oh, so, so good. So, so good. They've got a couple of lions there, chilling. I just, it's, yeah, it's so good. So, so good. All right, I'm gonna leave that one to last. Uh, this is a dock. Um, so you can obviously build some ships and sail across the great seas. And that just looks fabulous. I love the ship on it. Um, the detail of the actual buildings and structures themselves. It's just fabulous. It's so good. And then we have uh, this one, which is the um, the Legion, uh, the headquarters or monument to the Legion. Um, so SPQR, uh, which is the Spartans, Spartan, uh, whatever they call um, Roman Legion. The big eagle there as well, which is fabulous. It just looks spectacular. It's obviously a big building that you've got to try and make the space for. So one thing about this that I love as well is that you can see the plan of what someone's potentially trying to do and then you can buy that title deed just to piss them off. And I dig that, not a take that action, even though it's not really a take that action in game. Um, do you block? Do you further your own ends? Oh, mate. Decisions, decisions. And that's all the monuments. Um, wow. Uh, it's just, just making sure I've got everything back. Yep, it fits, good. I, I just can't even begin to describe, uh, other than you know what you've already seen, how that looks. 
it, it's just spectacular. It's such a great experience already, just unboxing the game, let alone being able to play it and set it up and have it look at table presence and stuff. It's just fantastic. So we do have one other small thing for you. Um, and that is uh, an extra little module, solo module, and along with one other small box as well. So I'm gonna clear this away, we'll get that for you, and then we'll show you what's in that last little component. All right, so we are nearly there, we are getting close. We have the Gardens of Ceres expansion, and then we have the trading and stealing uh, coins and punch outs, and I find a little something that's in this box here. So the Gardens of Ceres uh, effectively introduces a solo game mode, which I'm super pumped about. So we're gonna look at that first. Um, and effectively it creates an AI uh, that will uh, effectively try to stop you at every turn and block you at every turn, which means you're playing on that smaller board as well. So it's not a, it's not a lot of um, a mess that needs to get cleaned up, etc. There it is there. Uh, Foundations of our expansion designed by David Turkzy. Uh, and we have here silica gel that goes on the floor. Uh, we're going to pop that one just over yonder. Uh, and we've got this beautiful little bag to put all the tokens and things in. That's kind of cool. I'm digging that. Nice etched bag to tell you that it's an expansion. Uh, we've got tokens, tokens, and more tokens. So we've got a rule book here on how to play the solo expansion. Uh, and that's difficulty level. Uh, bag to hold garden tiles, solo player aid, um, action cards and garden tiles. Set up a two player game and do these things differently. How to claim deeds, uh, what you're doing, uh, enlarging a park, uh, grid bonuses, etc., credits, etc. Um, and then how to sort of bring that module to the fore. So these tokens go in the bag uh, and you draw them out. They're just a generic uh, chipboard. There's nothing too spectacular about them. Uh, but obviously that's a, a population uh, marker, uh, money, civilization, uh, uh, not civilization, um, uh, not civilization, culture is what I'm thinking, culture. Uh, and then the cards here will dictate what the AI player does in terms of what they construct on their turn, what they do on their turn, what actions they may take, whether they claim a deed or whatever the case may be. So there's action cards here, uh, which and there's uh, card types, claim deed in large park or bribe. Uh, and there's a bit of a player reference there, which is pretty straightforward um, and just gives you a bit of a rundown of how it all sort of works. So these cards are split into bribe. Um, sure, why not bribe? Uh, bribing for claim deed A C F in that order, I would imagine E G C B D G. So depending on knowing my luck, I'll play solo, and every time one of those claim deed cards comes up, uh, it'll be claiming the card that I need desperately for the next uh, part of my own expansion, um, just to piss me off. Uh, so <laughs> claiming deeds in different letters, the cheapest, the most expensive, three times, three times enlarging your park and making the spaces bigger, which limits the amount of space that I have to build on. Uh, that's frustrating. Damn you, Salazar. Um, that's okay, we still love you. So we're gonna put all that back in there. Uh, we have the trading and stealing victory point markers. Now these are uh, die cuts for uh, this one. They're pretty, again, same sort of thing. You've got two VP on one side, uh, four VP on the other side and these are part of the trading and stealing module because as far as the um, base game goes, the core game plus the monuments expansion, the fifth player expansion, there are also other modules that we saw earlier uh, to allow you for different modes of play. I think it's a total of five other modules, not including the Gardens of Ceres solo expansion. And that's a lot of replayability once people get their head around what is going to be an awesome tabletop game experience. Um, normal punch out, nothing too crazy to write home about there. I'm gonna just get them out now because it saves me doing it later on. Uh, and again, that can be used as victory point markers as well when you trade and or steal, um, both of which I find to be uh, wonderful pastimes. And then lastly, we have this one. Now earlier we saw a, uh, a first player marker, which I'll just give you another nice close up of there. Um, so you know that in the round you are the first player and then obviously uh, after the first era that moves, etc., cetera. Um, and we go from there. Uh, instead of using that though, instead of using that coin, which is awesome, uh, you have the option of using what is in this little box. Um, it's awesome, 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 awesome. 
and I think it was included in the Emperor Pledge. Uh, we, Emperor Pledge. We may have paid extra for it. I don't care. It looks fantastic. We have got a statue of Romulus in bronze as our first player marker because it just looks awesome. Look at him. Look at him. Give me all the money, Romulus. I would like to found your room. So, so good. Love it. Love it. Love it. Oh, fantastic. All right, he's going to go right there. Stand up front and center. There you go. Look at him. He looks boss. Fantastic. And that is it. That is the contents of uh, Foundations of Rome in all of its epic, epic, epic glory. Um, I do think... As, as big as the box is, there is a lot of gameplay going on here, which I'm absolutely digging. The fact that you could literally rip it out, rip out two panel, uh, two trays and the board game tray and be set up in minutes, that's fantastic as well. Um, but it would be remiss of me to go through all this and not show you what it looks like when it's set up. So let's have a look. Uh, we've done a bit of a B-roll and we'll show you what it looks like when it's all set up on the table and give you some of that sweet, sweet table presence. Roll the tape. I hope you enjoyed that folks there it is that is the contents of foundations of rome by arcane wonders the kickstarter exclusive this game is not coming to retail so if you missed out i'm sorry you snooze you lose uh as always folks it would be remiss of me not to thank our um the patreon supporters for all their support allowing us to do all the crazy stuff we do so thank you Mwah. big chef's kiss to each and every one of you we love your work and thank you for supporting us to allow us to do all the things we get to do here on the channel uh, live chats coming up with the creators of Strike Deck. We've got D&D uh, &D Live coming up. We are also looking at doing some D&D &D Junior. Uh, we'll show you a bit more about that, uh, talk a bit more about that down the track. Plenty more content coming your way, folks. By all means, stay subscribed, stay in touch. Let us know what you think about this one. If you've got one of those painted sets, let us know in the comments below. And we'll see you back at the table very, very soon for some more awesome content. Until then, though, it is bye for now.